a wild game in Pittsburgh where the boys from Raleigh rally in overtime. Turned out to be the first of two overtime games in Pittsburgh. DJ Burns and NC State defeat Jack Golke in Oakland 79-73 thanks to an 11-1 run in overtime. The Wolfpack advancing to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2015. NC State will play the winner of Colorado Marquette. The Wolfpack on a heck of a run. Seventh straight win in 12 days. Back here with Chip Patterson. NC State ended the regular season on a four-game losing streak. So you're sitting there going, ah, they're not going to make the tournament. They're not going to make the tournament. Then they won five games in five days. And in all, they have won seven since the end of the regular season. Chip, how the heck do you explain this Wolfpack run? The sense of urgency finally arrived. And yes, there can definitely be some frustration. Why did it take backs against the wall, season on the line, coach on the hot seat to be able to get that kind of urgency? But the pieces all came together. And this is where I give Kevin Keats and this coaching staff a good job of identifying the right pieces to come together. Players like Jaden Taylor, who stepped up with bigs in a big spot. Uh, o- O'Connell steps up in a huge spot against Virginia. And then, of course, here in the game, uh, I just feel like this NC State team has always had the confidence that it can hang with the best teams in the country. They get that even from the ACC tournament, getting the wins against Duke and North Carolina. So now they come in, they're playing with house money, they're playing free, they're playing urgent, and that's why they were the team. Even as this got all the way down into overtime, you know, they were always the one where it seems like they had the upper hand. There was the myth of Jack Golke, but the reality was that this NC State team had a good defensive plan to keep him in check. And so uh, I thought that it was a fantastic job by Keats and the Wolfpack. The urgency that, yes, fans might have wished they had seen a little more of throughout the season, they got it when it counts, and that's here in March. And DJ Burns stepping up in the place of the other DJ, their leading scorer, DJ Horn, who only had 11 points in this game and held scoreless for many points in this game. For nearly 40-some minutes uh, was DJ Horn held scoreless, and DJ Burns goes for 20 and 10. Another great game from him. NC State will face the winner of Colorado and Marquette, who play on Sunday. Meantime, North Carolina awaits the winner of Grand Canyon and Alabama. The Tar Heels take down Michigan State for their 31st Sweet 16 appearance in school history. Chip, what did you take away from UNC's victory over Michigan State as they improve to 6-0 all-time against the Spartans in the big dance? This is a North Carolina team that, yes, they can fill it up, but the reason why they have a one seed and the reason why they're in the Sweet 16 again is because they are really, really strong defensively. And the way that they were able to, you know, as Michigan State kept trying to climb back into the game, you know, they always had stop after stop after stop. You know, it starts with Armando Baycott and what he's able to do inside. Uh, it starts with the ball pressure that you get from players like Harrison Ingram. You even have Jalen Withers coming off the bench to be able to create havoc around the rim. It is just a team that so often has been able to you know, rely on getting those stops and then letting an R.J. Davis, letting an Armando Baycott lead the way. I mean, he's the ACC player of the year for a reason. They were the regular season champs of the Atlantic Coast Conference for a reason. And when you were being tested, by Tom Izzo, a Hall of Fame coach who has a great history of beating teams in game number two of these NCAA tournament weekends. Well, to emerge not only victorious, but really victorious with an exclamation point, I think it gives uh, North Carolina a sense that they really do have hopes of taking this thing all the way to the same spot where they were in 2022 and then maybe going one step further. Well, last time uh, they won a national championship, where was the national championship held? I believe that would be in out in Arizona yeah. where this one uh, and, oh. and I believe that was a redemption team yeah. too. Oh. And so uh, uh, yeah. see, yeah. see the storylines matching up. See, we like storylines and joining North Carolina in the Sweet 16, Iowa State and Illinois. You've got a team in the fighting Illini who want to run up and down the floor against the Cyclones, one of the best defensive teams in the country. What do you expect in this game of major programs clashing for a spot in the Elite Eight? Havoc! Chaos! I mean, just get your chainsaws ready because it's <laughs> going to be an absolute horror movie out there. So Iowa State plays defensive pressure where they're going to get all up in your face. They're going to extend all the way out beyond the three-point line. A real test for Terrence Shannon Jr., Marcus Damask, and the rest of these ball handlers for Illinois. But Illinois also doesn't play a whole lot of defense. And so it's a strength on weakness, strength on weakness game. Illinois' offense against uh, Iowa State's defense. Iowa State's offense against Illinois' defense. I just think it's going to be a chaos.
chaotic game where you are going to have to understand the intricacies of this matchup, the intricacies of this matchup. Like, does Dane Danger, the big man for Illinois, who has had such an important role in some of their postseason success, does he end up being the difference maker? Maybe it's the versatile Coleman Hawkins with the way he can stretch you out to the three pointer. Uh, Iowa State's defense is the key to this game. And so I, I think it's going to be frenetic. I think it is going to be hectic. And I think whoever can keep their cool and make those shots late, that's going to be in, end up advancing to the Elite Eight. Iowa State has held every opponent to 50% shooting or worse this season. And we will be there in Boston to see that one go down, Illinois and Iowa State. Another Sweet 16 matchup is set. Tennessee against Creighton, who's coming off a dramatic double overtime win against Oregon. Look. Chip, I've said this before, when the bracket came out on Sunday, on Selection Sunday, this region, the Midwest region, is the prove it region. Which team is going to prove it, Creighton or Tennessee? Who is going to prove they are elite? Tennessee. But I am not going to ignore what Creighton just did. And again, speaking back to like the North Carolina point, you get a sense with some of these second round wins that there is a real sense of belief and purpose within that locker room and for Creighton to be able to go and get this victory and not get knocked out when the whole season has been about getting back to this point when they fell one game short of the Final Four. Uh, I thought that Steven Ashworth was tremendous. I thought Ryan Kalkbrenner was really good in the overtime period. You know, this is a Creighton team that I deserve, you know, hats off. But Tennessee is different, man. This Tennessee team ha has always known that they can play elite defense. They've always known that they can, you know, beat you up and, and be really physical, win on the boards. But now they've got an offensive edge to them that they haven't had before. They've got a little bit more pace to them than they've had before. So uh, I'm going to say Tennessee here against Creighton. But it, of all the matchups that we have set, this is the one where Sure. Yeah. You know, one of those two. Yeah. Give it to me. I can't wait for this game. Creighton and Tennessee playing in the Sweet 16 in Detroit. And we've got plenty more on Sunday. Here's a look at Sunday's slate. The day begins in Indianapolis, where Colorado is coming off a thrilling win over Florida, taking on Marquette at 12 10 Eastern on CBS. Then Zach Eady and Purdue taking on Isaac Johnson in Utah State, the big fish against the big Boilermaker, followed by the Dukes against Duke. 12 seed James Madison trying to knock off the Blue Devils. Baylor and Clemson playing for a spot in Los Angeles. The winner of that game is going to play Arizona. And also trying to get to L.A. is the 12 seed Grand Canyon and Alabama. Both teams like to get up and down the court. The tied the highest scoring team in Division One. Number one overall seed UConn facing Northwestern as the Huskies continue their quest to repeat. Two contrasting styles between Houston and Texas A&M. And the last game of the day takes us to Spokane, Washington. 13 seed Yale taking on national runner up San Diego State. The final eight invitations to the Sweet 16 on the line. All right, back here with Chip Patterson. What is the top matchup to watch on Sunday? They're all going to be great to watch. What is your top matchup you are looking forward to most? Baylor and Clemson. Mm. I know, I know, because this was, is I would not have said that, but that, okay, tell me why. All right, this is, first of all, aesthetically pleasing. I mean, we are going to have uh, just points and points for days. A Baylor team that is not very good defensively and a Clemson team that, yes, we saw a good performance against New Mexico, but do I think that's defensive excellence or New Mexico only making three of 23 from behind the arc three point regression is real and I do think that we will see a much better performance from Baylor who just happens to be one of the best three point shooting teams in the entire country so I think it's going to be not a track meet but a very high scoring game a very efficient game from both of these teams you know PJ Hall is the Clemson player to know versatile big who could step out and make shots and so I'm looking forward to this game because I think it'll be aesthetically pleasing but the reason why I have named it ahead of other great games like Marquette, Colorado, the Dukes and the Dukes. It's because the West region doesn't have a monster. I believe in North Carolina and its ability to get to the Final Four. I think that Arizona has done some good things, especially in its win against uh, Dayton. But I don't think there is a monster the way that you've got UConn in the East, you've got Houston in the South, and you've got Purdue in the Midwest. So if there's a team that can look at their regional semifinals and a regional final matchup and think we can get to the final four. There are no monsters in the West and both Baylor and Clemson have the offensive ceiling to not only win this game, 
but then go on and win two more next weekend. All right, we'll see about that. Did uh, I sell you on it? Uh, yes, yes, you did. Okay, you did. But I, the game I'm uh, the game I'm looking forward to most watching is Purdue and Utah State. Uh, you, yeah, I, I can. I'm fair. excited for that game. That that game. I mean, Houston, Texas A&M. I mean, that's also give me that game as well. Uh, all right, who are you putting on upset alert? Because we've got we've got several double digit seeds in action once again on Sunday. The Duke Blue Devils. Yep. Yeah. I mean, so into the regular season, they lose to North Carolina. John Shire is apologizing to the student section, comes to meet the media, says, you know, we need to raise our level of compete. We're going to think on this. They show up to the ACC tournament one and done. Now they got beat by NC State, which obviously we have seen is now a supernova, but not what you want from the Duke Blue Devils. John Shire, you're like, we, we, we need to bring our level of compete that we needed. Then they show up against Vermont, and that game is tight at halftime. However, Duke did a good job of bouncing back. I'm just saying I'm seeing some flaws right now with this Duke team. James Madison is playing with confidence and swagger. I, they were the more confident team against Wisconsin. Yeah. They are not scared of the Blue Devils. James Madison on a 14-game winning streak, looking to make it 15 and knock off Duke. Stay hot, kids. Chip Patterson putting the Duke Blue Devils on upset alert against the Dukes. And hey, you want more college basketball content? Check out the Ion College Basketball Podcast with Matt Norlander and Gary Parrish as they break down all the storylines in the NCAA tournament. What you need to know as we head into the Sweet 16, the Ion College Basketball Podcast. Download and follow today.